In Procast, you can import credit card statements retrieved from your bank account for quick and easy journal entry creation. This process offers more capabilities than QuickBooks and other accounting software with an easy setup. This video is going to be broken down into three steps. Step one, import setup. This short step is done only once per card, generally completed during your first time using this module. Step two, credit card import process. This step will show you how to import your statement as well as make edits to the data. You will be able to create rules to recognize recurring charges from vendors, modify detail information, and separate transactions into their proper accounting periods to be in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. Step three, journal entry creation. This step will take the data you've imported and create your journal entries for you. Let's navigate over to the module. The credit card import can be accessed from the main menu by selecting Accounting, Accounts Payable, Credit Card Import. For step one, we're going to navigate up to the Import Setup screen. Setup for the credit card import is done by inserting a credit card vendor from your vendor list and selecting the file type you wish to import. We support comma delimited, tab delimited, and QuickBooks or QuickIn file types. The Procast recommended file type to use is the QuickBooks or QuickIn file type because selecting that file completes the setup. Our system will be able to read the data produced and pull it into the system with no extra steps. If you choose to use the comma or tab delimited files, you can map them to our system using the extra columns on the screen. In this example, I am using an American Express statement, which is a QuickBooks file. Now, let's import it. Now that we've completed the setup, this will be the starting point for all imports moving forward. To import my statement, I will browse my local computer to find the file. Once selected, I can look up my vendor code associated with my American Express account and input the date at which the statement was generated. From here, clicking the Upload File button will import the data and take me to my preview screen. If I have any questions about previous imports, the bottom half of the screen will provide a history of prior imports completed, including timestamps, who processed the import, and the associated journal entries. A refresh screen will appear with the contents of the imported file. The fields at the top of the form include information that can be used to create the header of a purchase journal transaction. The grid at the bottom is used to add cost coding and vendors and to establish rules for future imports. In this example, you will notice that most of my line items populated with accounts, vendors, and some task orders. That is because I have preset rules to recognize recurring charges on my credit card. On the right, the buttons that display change signal that I have a rule set which can be modified as needed. However, the row with staples in the line description does not have a previously set rule. Let's create one for it. We will choose the Office Supplies account and the Staples vendor and then click Set Rule. This pop-up form shows us that for the combination of the credit card vendor, description, and credit card text, we can save values that were entered on the grid for account, task, vendor, and labor category. 
We also have the option to exclude this transaction altogether if we do not want to include it in our journal entry. However, one of the biggest features of the rule set that separates us from other software vendors is the ability to set a wildcard for each rule. In the description, you can use the star or percentage symbol to tell the system to ignore values that come before or after the words you care about. For example, in this Staples description, the code AXRT5632 is unique to this specific purchase with Staples. In a future Staples purchase, this code will likely be different. Therefore, to capture all Staples purchases with this rule, I'm electing to put stars before and after Staples to ignore these unique codes and capture all descriptions containing staples. To finish, click Save. Other examples of the wildcard rule can be seen in the two Amazon purchases on this statement. Both have different description IDs, but because they both contain Amazon, I am able to have my rule applied with no extra steps. Most other accounting systems only contain exact matches with no wildcard option. Looking at some other options on this screen, we can tell the system exactly how we want our journals created. The fourth column in the grid displays the transaction date of the journal entry for each credit card charge. By default, one purchase journal transaction will be made using the credit card statement date as the transaction date. However, the first column displays the specific date charged for each transaction in the file. In this example, we can see that some of the dates are in the prior month. By clicking the checkboxes in the prior period column, the system changes the transaction date to be the last day of the prior period. Therefore, all entries that we've checked off will be recorded on one separate entry in the prior accounting period. Additionally, if we would like a transaction to be recorded on its own journal entry and on the specific date it was charged, we can click Separate Transaction. Now, based on my selections, I can anticipate three total entries being created for all the charges on my card. This will be explained later in the video. If I need to break apart a single credit card transaction into multiple accounts, amounts, vendors, or tasks, this can be done by splitting the transaction. When I click the split button, a copy of the original row is created, but with a zero amount. Here, I can make a modification as needed. In this example, I want to move a portion of my Dell purchase to a computer supplies account. Once the modification is made, the split icon will display differently in the grid. Last but not least, the row with the auto pay description has been excluded by a rule because that amount always represents the payment for a previous credit card statement and should not be deducted from the total charges on this statement. Once all modifications are made, at the bottom of the grid, I can see my default accounts payable account, which should match the total to be paid on the original statement. Now that we have edited the accounts, vendors, and transaction dates, we are ready to create transactions. After clicking Create Transactions, a notification message appears showing us that there are three purchase journal entries created for our selection. The first entry will be dated using the credit card statement date, in this case, November 11th. Another entry will be created using the end date for the prior period, in this case, October 31st. And a third entry 
will be created using the specific date of the standalone transaction, October 19th. The entry dated November 11th is considered the base transaction and uses your default credit card liability account to link back to the prior two entries along with transaction IDs. This method is incorporated into the process for proper expense recognition as per generally accepted accounting principles. By accruing these entries, we are able to recognize the expense in the correct period for each charge on the credit card. At this point, the credit card process is complete and you are able to process payment for the overall balance of your statement, which is displayed in your accounts payable account. Thank you for taking the time to learn the credit card import process.